<laughs> oh, oh lord you're taking your pill oh. you're done pooping i'm done pooping hey everyone welcome to my channel if you're new welcome back if you're returning sorry this one's a little late if you can tell by my voice going through a few things <laughs> anyway we've got a bunch of crying and a bunch of pooping and a bunch of little blue pills but before we get into all of the madness so yara and jovi went to their own individual counseling session and in that session they addressed a couple of things that uh, let's just look you basically want a massage before you, uh... And then not, not like a rabbit. Okay. So Jovi's skipping out on the cuddling, and Yara has to get jackhammered. Either way, it, it's just like regular re relationship stuff. That's why I really wish that Jovi wasn't so stupid, and he would just be honest with his wife, because they are like the most regular couple of them all. And I will try to more at a pace that you want, if that's what pleases you. Aw, look who's trying to win husband of the year. And Yara goes on to say that at least now they know their problems, but the poor girl has no idea that Jovi's a liar. The boy's a liar but it's going to come out. Anywho, over there in Angie land, she and Michael were doing like a virtual bathing suit try on. I guess they're gonna go like celebrate their little anniversary. I thought they had already done that, but it seems that this is gonna go on for multiple episodes. Angela and Michael are getting better with this whole virtual thing. And according to Angela, this is going to improve their connection. Which connection you may ask? Direction connection. Woo! <laughs> Oh, holy lord. Angie is a hoot. She is definitely the type of person that you want to party with. Anyway, she just has to be her and we just have to let her. So she throws on her Nigerian goddess braids and heads down to the beach for her, I guess, dinner with no dinner by candlelight during the daytime with her hubby, who is virtual. Yeah. Turn that out. I like the dress. Oh. Oh, that's my sexy baby. So I don't really understand the point of going to the beach for a dinner date, but it was like daylight and there was no food, so no one ate any dinner, and then your man was virtual. But either way, his sexy baby went back to the room, and that is the last we saw of her. Speaking of things I also don't understand, so Kelly decides that he's going to leave the resort. And for some weird reason, Molly thought it was a good idea to knock on his screen door and like come through like, I was thinking I could walk you to your car, even though I have you out here looking like a fool and i embarrassed you on public television and i don't want you to stay i'm not here to tell you i love you because i don't love you but i just came here to stick it to you one more time and, and to make sure that you really leave i mean i'm sorry uh, uh see you all so she comes over there i don't know this is like the green mile the walk of death whatever it is she just looks so devious as she's walking him away but before we go there let's get to how he came to the determination that it was best to just go home despite what kelly may think i loved him this hurts. See, here she goes again. I don't think it's what Kelly thinks. I think it's everything that she said. And this goes back to the whole idea of like starting a relationship and not having conversations with the person that you want to be with. Because maybe her definition of love is completely different from his because clearly they're on two different pages. And every time she talks, Kelly's just like rolling his eyes because he he just hates this woman. He doesn't hate her, but he's frustrated and he's embarrassed. So I'm so glad that he's gone. I wish he would have stayed because I wanted to see the whole strip club thing. But yeah, he needs to leave. And he probably should have taken her with him. You asked me if I'm in love with you. Mm -mm. I did not, Molly. I loved you. I'm not in love with you anymore. I feel like every time she says that, the look on the doctor's face is exactly the look I have. Like, is she really trying to justify this? Like, does this fool not realize that that doesn't make this blow any less impactful? Either way, let's move on to more important people. Okay, I'm good. Oops, spoke too soon. Definitely not more important, but definitely more interesting storyline and especially more uh, more connected to the whole strip club debacle. That's all I'm here for at this point. Either way, Ed took Liz to go uh, see some sharks and apparently that's her thing, not his thing. And then we get to Ed running his big mouth. Something happened the other night. When Liz cocked that head to the side, I was like, uh-oh, here we go. So Ed proceeds to tell Liz everything. He says, well, all the guys, they told me not to tell, but they want to go to a strip club. And, 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 but, 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 I'm not supposed to tell you, but I'm going to tell you because I love you and I don't want to lose you. And Liz was like, wait a minute, what? So they told you not to tell me something. It, it, the whole thing is that it's not about them telling him not to tell Liz because Liz is the issue. It's about not telling the women. But Liz chose to make this situation about her. And oh, I'm, I'm really mad now because they're telling you to lie to me. But really, that's not even what it was. I'm not going. Bottom line, I'm 57 years old. I don't need to be looking at I, I like your boobs a lot. 
So Liz's little fake outrage is really cute. And Ed told just like I knew he would. Kelly tried to tell him like, uh, it's going to snitch. He shouldn't even be invited. But they invited him. And I think the only person who's really going to have an issue is Jovi. Jovi's going to have a big problem on his hand. But oh, well, that's his issue. Because for one, he should never invited Ed. And for two, he should have just told Yara what they had planned. Over on the other side of the island, Kehlani, Ke Colini, and Asuelu all meet with the counselor to kind of talk about everything that's going on. Just get everything on the table. And the counselor set up a game of Jenga for them. Basically, you're trying to get the blocks out without the tower falling. Like this. Start and bold. Which, you know, Kehlani's going to explain to Asuelu how to play the game. And Asuelu has this way of playing stupid. Like, you know, he acts like he's working at a deficit because he talks really slow. And he's like, is this what I'm supposed to do? Is this what? Oh, is it like that? And then he comes in and he, like, masters the game. So I think it's all an act with Asuelu. That's why sometimes when he does all those tears, I just kind of don't buy it. Because I feel like he does what he needs to do to get out of whatever situation he's in. Either way, it's kind of uh, telling. It was like the person that knocked down the whole Jenga thing was Colini, and I feel like she's part of the person that's actually ruining the relationship. So I, I thought that was kind of like, oh, look at look at art imitating life. It's kind of mimicking what is the truth. So after a little group bonding Jenga activity, they go and have a group counseling session and things get spicy, y'all. So the counselor asked Colini why, you know, what is the issue between her and Asuelu? And Colini didn't hold anything back. We don't speak, kind of said hello this trip, um, but other than that, we haven't spoken. I think that my sister is a very kind person and gives everyone options and opportunities to like show her who they are all i know is i don't get warm ushy gushy vibes from colini but seeing as though asuelu started his mess way before the filming started i have no idea if that's valid or not but yeah i just don't get kind and sweet and mushy and gushy yeah, i'd get so depressed and be so upset and i'd be crying and it was her that would have to help me get back to normal. I can see how K Colini could build up a disdain for Asuelu based off of how he's treating her sister. But at the end of the day, if your sister chooses to stay, then it's not for you to be mean to him. But it's crazy how every time they talk about Asuelu, like he's not even there. He does this weird blinking, not looking, but kind of looking, not swallowing, but almost swallowing, sweating thing. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Either way, they go into more detail about all the down and dirty things that Asuelu was doing, and it gets crazy, y'all. He would buy their naked pictures online, and that led all the way up until Samoa, where he... Well, we know what he did in Samoa, so we'll move past that part. And so collectively, he's cheated, like, 10, 12 times. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, girl, my head hurts, too, after hearing that. Um... Yeah, that explains a lot. That that really does. <sighs> Moving on. You hurt me over and over and over. Asuelu goes on to say, I feel like she deserves better than me. And I, Kalani went out and found better. So no need to worry about that. She's got that covered, boo-boo. Everything they say is true. In true Asuelu fashion, when he feels like his back is against the wall and there's nothing else he can say. Incoming. <laughs> Asuelu hit those tears and Big Mama Drama decided to comfort him and I was looking at her nails because see I get mine done and within three to four days my nails are already growing. Does anyone else have that type of issue where their nails just grow super super fast? Either way I, it's hard to believe that they spent two to three weeks at this resort and her nails look like they filmed all of this in one weekend. Uh, you know, maybe it's an editing thing. Maybe I'm just looking too much into it. Either way, uh, Kalani goes on to comfort Asuelu with some words. And the words weren't very comforting. As a matter of fact, they were pretty cryptic to me. It kind of felt like a Molly way of breaking up with Asuelu, the way she hit it. But I don't know. You guys get in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And thumbs this video up, please. Like, I have a lot of love for you. And regardless of the outcome of anything, like, I always want the best for you. <laughs> Oh, holy lord.